we want to first introduce these two lovely people sitting next to me. And uh, yeah, take it away. What do you do in uh, the sphere of wellness and health? And who are you, most importantly? I can start. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm Marta. I work for Seven Mind, which is uh, one of the meditation and mindfulness apps uh, with a focus on uh, also prevention. Um, so yeah, we have a great variety of, of meditation and courses, so that uh, it's kind of a daily companionship uh, for everyone. We also have free das gong baths, so if you've missed the sessions today, or if you want to try it out again, it's also available uh, at Seven Minds, so just download it and check it out. And I lead a performance marketing team there, so everything user acquisition related. That was a nice plug to download the app. <laughs> nice nice uh, head of UI, right? So I'm Stas, I'm the head of growth. Uh, you can also download our app. Uh, it's free. <laughs> uh, so um, it's, it's a medical device app. So we're in the medical device category. So the, the more, let's say, hardcore, rel I want to say uh, it's related to wellness, yeah? So we are connected, uh, but it's not purely health and wellness kind of app. It's a medical app, but... Of course, it's uh, yeah, very much related, I would say. I'm doing uh, uh, growth, which means, in our case, mainly user acquisition at this point in time. We have uh, also CRM activity, a little bit going on, but again, because we're medical and it's super hard to share data uh, and integrate SDKs and whatnot, it's a little bit slow for us at the moment on the CRM side, so we're doing some email marketing at this point in time. Thank you. Um, you talk about wellness and health being the this, this similar kind of vein of, um, uh, of a topic. Um, would you be able to define for me, both of you, what wellness is? And if it's different from health, why is it different from health? Yes, absolutely. I think that um, I think you can all maybe uh, confirm it for yourselves, but I think wellness is a very individual and very personal experience, and it means uh, something else for every each of us. Um, I think that uh, as we mature and as we've entered into adulthood, we definitely experience a vast uh, amount of stress, whether it's at the workplace or maybe even during studies. Um, and I think that we've tried different things, we've tried different hobbies, and um, yeah, for me, wellness essentially uh, means having routines and small rituals that uh, enable me to unwind, to relax, uh, to come together, and um, I can definitely in a meditation app uh, has been definitely a valuable experience um, in, in experiencing what a wellness is. Um, I can say that uh, upon joining the company, I didn't know much about meditation. Uh, it, was, it was getting hyped, that's for sure. It was three and a half years ago. Uh, and yes, back then we already had uh, daily meditations at the office. Uh, and, and with great curiosity, I, I've started joining the sessions. And I can confirm, based on my individual experience, that I definitely became calmer, more patient. Uh, I used to be very impatient. And now I accept moments as they come. Um, and yeah, enjoy the present moment. But as mentioned, wellness is definitely an individual experience. And for me, it's always my morning routine which includes journaling, so reflecting on the previous day. I always try to find three things I'm grateful for, but made the day special, to not take anything for granted, but rather reflect and, and um, yes, be grateful for the experience of either meeting people or experience something new. Um, so that is definitely part of my morning routine, some gentle stretching, yoga, or maybe morning run. Um, and definitely having at least those seven minutes or 10 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, to come together and uh, do some breath work, because that's ultimately what meditation is. But again, it's a very individual experience, and uh, my wellness and something that relaxes me might not necessarily be the same for uh, someone else. What about your evening routine? <laughs> 
yes, that's the thing. I, I find it really hard after having a very uh, stressful day or a taxing week uh, to relax in the evening, uh, to just, you know, uh, forget everything what has happened during the day that might have been stressful, uh, which is why I always have my morning routine. After having some good night's nice sleep, I am completely uh, in a different headspace. So, yes, uh, when it comes to, to evening routines, just, you know, being social perhaps and maybe reading books or watching movies, but it's definitely something that is uh, perhaps uh, similar to, to your experiences. Yeah, almost like the individual becomes the collective by socializing after work or whatever. Um, I think what's interesting is maybe that lunch gets missed out. What happens at lunch? <laughs> oh yes, lunch, lunch <laughs> often gets uh, <laughs> missed out. That's yeah. actually how uh, Stas and I met in one of the lunch clubs. <laughs> so during lunch we were still working. Um, yeah, so this is a funny coincidence. But yes, definitely lunch can be a wonderful uh, routine and a moment to unwind as well. Yeah. And Stan, what is wellness to you? So, uh, again, like to me personally, it would be something that um, everything that Marta said, plus, uh, of course, the, it's, it's mental health. It's, it's a lot of it is, is mental health related. So in the past, I think people mainly focused on the physical well-being, right? To stay healthy and being fit and count your calories and whatnot. But what we kind of realized collectively, I think, in the past few years, I would say, uh, definitely so in the last year, that, you know, the mental health is tremendously important, and this is something we see in our own data uh, inside the app. So you see the, the instances of people uh, reporting mental health-related symptoms, and then as a result of uh, findings and conditions that uh, the app displays, is definitely skyrocketed. So you see a lot of, um, unfortunately, even like among the younger population, so you see the kids, uh, something we published even on LinkedIn, I think our CEO published it uh, some time ago, uh, that we see the uh, uh, correlation that our data scientists established between the uh, school closures and instances of um, <clears throat> mental health issues, depression among uh, young population, adolescents and such. So it's tremendously important to be, you know, to keep your sanity, I guess, and, and, and have rituals and, you know, focus on your mental well-being. Of course, it doesn't, one does not go without the other. I personally also subscribe to routines. It's not as, let's say, managed. I don't use, uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm sorry, I will use uh, some uh, for free if you give me vouchers, but maybe. Uh, but everyone ha probably has a routine or should have one, right? So I do similar things. I jog and I, I, I take a breather and uh, take a walk, have breaks during the day, super important, right? Decompress. And I don't know, it just generally helps to have a maybe more philosophical outlook uh, on life, not to stress as, I mean, it's easier said than done, don't stress, but you know, you need to actually make an effort to kind of compartmentalize all these topics and put them aside and kind of look at this in a relative grand scheme of things, you know, so, you know, what's more important and how things are really trivial sometimes and you don't need to stress around yeah. them. Yeah, and I think, um well, the topic of this conversation is the rise in wellness apps over the last two years. What is these two years? Corona! Um, and I guess Corona, for me, and we were talking about this before, is a double-edged sword. Um, for a lot, it's, it's, it's made them reevaluate their lives. Um, I don't know if anyone agrees here, and I'm sure it's been tough for a lot of people as well. Um, but you two kind of have found this kind of rising and rising uh, was a niche before um, and now wellness is, is the big topic. Um, how has it been for you two um, from the before the BC <laughs> to now um, with your apps? What has Corona done to affect this? Absolutely. So I can hear uh, confirm, but we've definitely seen a momentum and a hundred percent growth uh, month over month and year over year. Uh, so um, as unfortunate as the uh, event was and still kind of is, uh, we definitely ma managed to, to um, meet the audience and provide the valuable experience. Um, so when all this happened, um, slowly after Corona 
was announced and was in our present in our lives, we have released a special content um, managing the crisis, but we have unlocked to everyone. So at the moment, Seven Mind has a premium and freemium um, um, selection, right? So we have some of the content that is available to everyone, and some of it is uh, is locked. So you have to subscribe to unlock it. But then we've decided, uh, as we were also experienced a significant significant increase in terms of the emails we were receiving from the users um, with, with the feeling of, of being overwhelmed. So we've decided to unlock this content to help uh, users unite. We also had uh, dedicated daily meditations uh, with our community um, that were happening live on a daily basis with our uh, speakers in, in all, almost all of the markets that we are present at. And we definitely also experience uh, lots of user love, as we call it, uh, for being together. Uh, because I think, you know, the, mo the important part was that we were communicating, where we were talking, we were discussing it, and sharing this emotional burden that each and every of us experienced in a different uh, level. So uh, that was something that we did, and that was definitely uh, very appreciated by our users. And we also came together as a company um, to talk about it, because obviously for us it also meant a double amount of work, and how, how do we handle it, right? So it was a very interesting experience to go through it together as an organization, and also hear from our user what it means. Um, so, definitely that was something very, very meaningful in many different levels. Yeah. And it, does supply match demand? Because it happens so quickly that I know I've talked to people in England that have similar apps. They can't find enough therapists or, you know, how is that for you? Both. Yeah, I think this is something that uh, is definitely very big at the moment, prevention. And uh, in the German healthcare, it's very, very vibrant at the moment. Uh, so, Seven Mind is, uh, is a certified app by the German government, and we have a, a course that is called uh, ABSM. So essentially it is referring to the stress reduction and it's a model of eight courses that you do on a weekly basis and we have scientifically proven that your stress level will be significantly um, um, decreased when, when you complete this course. Uh, so that is also very, very interesting to see uh, how uh, digital products are tapping into this space mm -hmm. and what impact it, in general apps have on your mental health. Yes. We all experience it, we are on social media, we use our phones a lot, and we see what impact it has on our psyche, right? So uh, that is also very interesting to see that uh, digital products and apps can actually also have positive impact on our health. Uh, and yes, I invite you all to complete the course uh, if you're curious and uh, yeah, how to also deal with digital products is also part of the course uh, stress prevention. Mm. And Stan, Corona. So for us, it's like a mixed bag, honestly. So um, the company model Corona uh, detection into the AI before uh, pandemic actually started, so I know it's it's sus suspicious, but hey, we're not we're not involved in the pandemic. Uh, but it was modeled already in February, so the thing started in March, and the app was ready to actually detect it, detect your symptoms if you report them correctly. Um, and we we saw a huge increase, right, like over 100 percent increase from the first month until I want to say around about May. Same year, last year, and what happened in May is that Google uh, changed their policies around me metadata usage of COVID-related terms. Uh, what it meant is that we, unless you uh, official uh, public health organization or officially endorsed by such, you cannot use any COVID-related terms in your metadata, even if we are a certified medical device, and which we are. Um, we had to remove everything from uh, COVID related from our descriptions. Could you give us an example of one of those terms? Are you, are you, are you Simple as saying this app can detect your COVID-19 related symptoms 
and, and, and determine with a fair bit of accuracy what might be wrong, because it's not, we cannot say it's diagnostic. It's, uh, you know, only doctors, our human doctors can actually have an official diagnosis made. It, it, the official term, what we do is assessment. Normal, I mean, human beings don't use assessment, they use symptom check or diagnosis. Anyway, so this is a little bit of this conflict of how you use terminology and keywords in marketing versus um, like what you're allowed to use and what people actually use, what our compliance says we can use. So that's quite problematic for us. So we had to remove everything COVID-19 related from the app description. That means in terms of app store optimization, we could no longer be detected if the user searched for anything related to COVID. Only the official governmental apps were allowed. It was a huge struggle with Google, but you know, when I, I guess big enough play, I mean, probably nobody is, to actually change their minds. They gave us seven days uh, sort of uh, warning uh, before we got kicked out from the Play Store. And, you know, you know we tried and uh, lots of uh, futile calls and emails and running around like crazy trying to find that endorsement from it. And we are connected to a huge amount of public institutions. We cooperate with Munch, but it was not enough and there was no one to talk to in Google. So unfortunately, we had to remove it to keep the app live, uh, but we still saw an increase in terms of the assessments. And in general, there was an increase in organic user acquisition just because people just generally more uh, self-aware about health, and people cannot go to doctors easy as they could in the past, which touches on the problem, problematics of healthcare and everywhere, honestly. The Western world, is, uh, which is more even acute problem sometimes that people do not realize, the Western world health systems are in dire shape before pandemic. People are, doctors are overloaded. Uh, on average, there's a seven minute per patient that the doctor can actually allocate. That means they cannot really spend the time uh, giving you the, the attention and care you deserve. So you, they miss on, on these things. Uh, so these type of apps like ours come to fix potentially or help that problem, uh, it, it's, it was just uh, made so much worse in the pandemic because you cannot go to a doctor, even if you want to a lot of times, right? Especially in the lockdown, unless it's COVID-related symptoms, they say, stay home. Um, so that's where app comes in because it actually detects with fair bit of certainty uh, and it tells you what's the probabilistic, like what's the, what's the percentage there, probabilistically whether you might have this or that. Um, you know, so that, that's increased tremendously, you know, because people don't have any other options. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of a double-edged sword, like you said. Do you, do you ever have uh, problems with people maybe finding it harder to trust apps because they are come from a kind of technological uh, context and whereas going to see a doctor, for instance, there's this kind of process towards it and you see this person and you talk to them and you know by taking that away I guess um, some people could 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 lack trust and there's ever been ever kind of this situation with you it is it is the case uh, it can happen so it also very much cultural base so it's very it depends on the location so I, I can openly say for instance that uh, we, we see that the from German user base tends to be a bit more conservative in terms of like everything digital related and especially data related. So lots of these concerns are, hey, what happens to my data? Do, what do you do with it and how and, and why and, and, and do you even need it? So, you know, so it's very much cultural. If you look at American users, probably the exact opposite of it, they don't care, they don't ask those questions. They are much more, uh, I guess, used to sharing data or they don't have GDPR. They have something similar, but only for California, kind of. But you know, it's it's not it's very different from country yeah. to country. And Marta, what about data use for your app as well? Yeah, I can definitely confirm here. <laughs> so we are mostly present in also the German market. Our users are definitely. Um, yeah, this is a very sensitive topic. Um, I, I guess across the world with 
more on or less consciousness. Um, but yes, in our case, we are actually not gathering any uh, demographical data. We don't ask for it because uh, we don't need it. Of course, you could always argue as a marketeer you need it. But in our case, knowing how important it is to our users and also what our product actually offers and stands for, it's very, very important that we focus on the experience, uh, which is also why we are so uh, mindful when it comes to advertising even whenever we have offers or, um, you know, uh, we, are, we are trying to be very, very mindful of this because, yes, we see also, and uh, compared to other markets, an increased amount of uh, uh, emails uh, asking why this uh, certain campaigns happen or occur or uh, how users were targeted. But because we ask for so little information on a personal level, um, it's not often the case. Okay, and how much information do you ask? What? Tell me what you ask. <laughs> tell yes, us. definitely. Now, now you're checking my knowledge of the onboarding. <laughs> you have to do it exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now we ask for very little information, just the name, you know, so that we also make an uh, email correspondence uh, personal. But that's it. And then we have okay, individual great. journey. Uh, with some um, seven minders, as we call them, which are uh, affirmations and reminders. Yeah, but it's, okay. it's, it's very, very, very uh, limited, I would say. Um, we touched on this a little bit, um, but the German healthcare system, how have they responded to you both, your apps? Um, has there been any clash between the German healthcare system and and how have they learned from 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 you as well as a secondary question um, from health to well-being to mindfulness is that incorporated at all into the German healthcare system? I'm I I don't know. <laughs> yes, yeah, so definitely both Stas and I can talk about it because as Stas mentioned, in their case, they are a digital uh, certified product. In our case, we are a step uh, below that as we have only a certified content. But definitely um, Germany has one of the best healthcare systems in the world. And the fact uh, how innovative they are when it comes to uh, marking digital products as medical devices is already the stamp of approval for the system itself, right? Um, so in this case, I can only confirm that when it comes to the user feedback and, and the stress prevention calls that we offer, the fact that uh, German uh, insurance companies reimburse their users for completing these courses is definitely a, a step in the right direction. So I think living in Germany and having access to uh, the system I know how bureaucratic it can be. Everyone living here in Germany uh, can assure uh, that it's the case. But at the same time, I think it's incredibly um, um, in innovative that they stepped up their game and offer apps uh, and certify them as, as products that actually improve well-being, decrease stress levels, and you know, going in this prevention direction, not being reactive when it comes to our healthcare, but being proactive uh, is, is definitely uh, incredible. Do you have anything to add on that part? Yeah. <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, in our case, it's uh, definitely created a lot more interest uh, because of this law. Uh, and in the past, things were quite, let's say, slower uh, in terms of like business development and mm -hmm. partner integration. So, we have this whole uh, big B2B activity, so B2B to B2C, we can say. I personally don't, don't handle that, uh, but other teams are, and they have let's say, tremendous amount of interest as a result, just because the system suddenly supports it, and it's so much, let's say, easier than in the past. So yeah, a huge influx on a B2B activity for us as a result. Very interesting. Um, I think we are drawing to a close. That was very quick. Um, but do we have time for questions? OK, we have time for questions. So has anyone got any questions? And he's got the, the microphone. Okay. 
Hey, um, very interesting. Thank you for that. And I especially like when you mentioned about prevention, which I think is not very common in the Western medicine as we focus on treatment, right? And definitely comes from the Eastern part to prevent things before they happen. Um, and I wonder, like, how is it for you, especially when it comes to your apps, what, for us as an audience, what are the, the alarm bells or where we should actually start thinking about that before it's basically, we need to look for either mental or physical help there? I guess ideal situation is uh, where, you don't, where you don't find yourself in a position to seek support. I'm not myself a doctor, <laughs> so I wouldn't want to speak, uh, you know, from this perspective. But I can only reassure you that each of us is living a stressful life. Uh, at, at times it's less stressful, at times it's more stressful. That's why it's so important to keep up this routine that is keeping you sane, so to speak. Um, and I know it's hard. I know it's hard to find a uh, 20 minutes uh, um, 20 minutes during the day, it, it sounds like it's a great amount of time. That's why it's so important to start uh, with very little time, like three minutes. For instance, this is also the, the kind of content we offer within the app, three minutes or even one minute SOS um, meditation, because sometimes it's very hard during the day, if you have a family, if you have responsibilities, some house chores, to find these 20 minutes. But I can only encourage you, and speak from my own individual experience, but finding this routine, um, maybe not every day, but at least every second day, is, is very, very, very helpful. I can say from our experience, it's a bit shameless plug, but uh, it, it's exactly what the, our uh, teams are working on at the moment. It's moving from um, an app that responds to sickness to actually be, build a preventive uh, type of product where we integrate your actual real data, hopefully, uh, via your variables if you have, uh, you know, your, your watches or Apple Watch, whatever, uh, Fitbits, O-rings, whatnot, uh, your medical history, potential blood test results and what, whatever you can upload and connect and whatever you feel comfortable with. And the algorithm will take care uh, calculating uh, your uh, risk scores for different potential diseases. Also, if we add, uh, let's say, uh, genome sequencing on top, uh, which is also in works, then it will supplement it even further. It will look into your sort of genome predisposition towards specific conditions, uh, and the app will hopefully will tell you in a, in a preventive way, hey, your vital suspiciously low here, or you know, you might want to consider checking this or that. So before you actually get in sick, so this is something that definitely, rightfully pointed out, uh, is not the case at the moment. You don't find lots of health preventive products. It's actually stuff uh, products that just react to things. You know, so yeah, it's a good question. Ground, thanks. Hello, yes. So thank you very much. I have uh, two questions. First of them is if you have any data on work-related stress, if there are specific industries that are more stressful. And second, what do your companies do for the employees not to feel stressed? Uh, I can start with the second question <laughs> because my company really does a lot. Uh, so uh, first of all, within the culture, we have uh, such packs, you know, like um, daily meditation. Obviously, this is more tricky within uh, living in this uh, remote world, but still we have uh, everyday daily meditation at 12.15. And during the year, we have different challenges as well. Um, uh, we also have initiatives, so um, brown back, we call it. Every month we give, um, every employee offers their talent to run some sessions. Uh, so. We come together, whoever wants, during the lunch break, and we, we do things together. Uh, of course, we also have a, an offline event. Uh, it's called Mind Conference, once a year, where we also come together for one week, uh, or maybe um, longer weekend, depends, uh, where we also have a lot of uh, mindfulness and meditation activities and, and uh, facilitators who join us and offer um, very interesting content and in, in, in their expertise. Um, 
We also have a bookworm initiative, so we can order whatever books we find interesting and then we bring them to the office so we can share with our colleagues uh, the wisdom <laughs> we've learned. Um, yeah, we have a lot of different perks and it's really, really uh, interesting. Uh, how, how uh, insightful it is as well and, and what people and culture team brings to the table. I can't even remember them all because there are so many. Um, but yes, um, the second question was with regards to the stress, um, uh, in, in, in stress within different industries, right? Uh, so that is also a very interesting part because we work with different uh, organizations. Um, also, we work with uh, particular uh, health insurance companies. Uh, here, our biggest um, partner is Barmer, which is one of the biggest uh, German insurance companies. And they offer our product uh, also completely free of charge to their own insurees. All, all they have to do is just sign up with their um, insurance number. Um, but yes, uh, that's one of the insurance companies we closely collaborate with. There are many more. When it comes to the industry, um, we could definitely argue that uh, consulting, management consulting is one of the most stressful ones, uh, and we also have initiatives uh, with them. But we work with many different organizations across different verticals, um, and I guess it var varies. Um, I, I guess my B2B colleagues would be uh, more probably prepared to answer this question. I know it's just at top level. I, I can say from our experience, it's, I um, can't talk really about the industry, to be honest, but countries, I can say something interesting that we found lately, that, for instance, uh, LATAM, and specifically Mexico, has a tremendous amount of burnout symptoms. Like, we see that it far outpaces other locations. We don't know why. It's a, it's a great question to ask, probably, and investigate, but it's, it's a curious at that. Because our app is available for all, we don't uh, target any specific group, like specific, it's, it's open for all. And the population breakdown is more or less similar than like everywhere else, but specifically they report burnouts in double digit percentages more so than any other country. Not sure why, this is a recent trend. Um, what we do in terms of, uh, in, inside the company for employees, actually working with one of your <laughs> <laughs> competitors. <laughs> Sorry, the same was my decision. Eh? Um, but, but hey, uh, hey, we can talk. Um, and we uh, pride ourselves on having like a really strict work-life balance. Uh, it's really like enforced. Like even management uh, makes sure that people don't reply to emails later. We don't encourage people to do too many meetings. We have this, I think everyone tried to minimize meetings, right? Uh, Friday free meetings, whatnot. They, doesn't really work often, but the attempt is there. Yeah, so that's how we try to do things. One initiative I can also suggest that is very, very easy to incorporate is starting each and every meeting, that's what we do uh, at Seven Mind, with one minute of silence. It is incredibly powerful, and it is a very easy um, in, in incorporation for sure. So you can try it out for yourselves. It's kind of like what you did as kids at school in assembly, this like moment of quietness. Um, if you went to a hippie school like mine, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, Steiner. Um, any more questions? I think our time is up. Marina's just wandered, wandered over. I know in England, dentists are pretty hard done by. <laughs> just to un answer your question, to bring it to the morbid state, I think they're, they don't last long kind of thing. Um, but I don't know about Germany. Uh, okay. Well, thank you so much for coming um, and talking. Thank you for having us. And now we have a little sing song. Ah, so we probably need to take away our chairs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.